What is your favorite way to preserve food? Today I want to share with you the different ways we preserve food on our homestead, the tools that we use every single season, every single year. But before we get started, I'm Julia, Erin's behind the camera, and we are the Canning Couple, a small homestead family in rural Southwest Virginia that work every day to merge homesteading and frugality. We would really appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe to our channel. So as you can see, this is my smaller <laughs> homestead kitchen. Um, canning, not really the canning kitchen because it doesn't have a stove in here. This is more of um, what this was, was an unused space in our home that we decided to make more functional for our family. It turned it into a place for some of our bigger tools we use on the homestead, like our freeze dryer and our dehydrators to get them out of our kitchen and also to put jars, lids, and all of the other food preservation tools that we use like our extra canners or pans that I use to carry between the rooms or all of the accessories we have gotten for our freeze jar. So freeze jar is one of the first ones I'm going to talk about. So the freeze jar, this is an investment. It's very much an investment. They can be a little bit pricey. Um, we actually built this as part of our house remodel. <laughs> one of the reasons we did the room this way was so we could have the freeze dryer whenever I first heard about it I loved the idea I loved what you could do with it and this was one that I told Erin I wanted to get for the house whenever it got updated and we do like it um, my, my biggest caveat is the amount of heat it pulls off and the amount of time it takes it does take quite a bit of time to run it but that is okay now as you can tell these are not running right now my freeze dryer and my dehydrator are not running right now because of the heat we do not want to heat up our house this thing pushes off a lot of heat so we actually do not run this in the summertime we will run it in the winter or in the um, cooler parts of fall and the cooler parts of spring what I'll do is I'll put things in the freezer have them ready to go in baggies that I can pull out throw on the freeze dryer trays and put them in here and let them go. I love zucchini in here. I have dehydrated zucchini. I have freeze dried zucchini. There, you, there is a huge difference. And what we like about it too is we're able to make more shelf stable. Yes, it's a longer shelf stable um, if, it, if it does dry. Sometimes you can have little issues with that, but for the most part, we've had a lot of success with that personally. Um, but I love zucchini from this, absolutely love it. My dehydrator. I have an Excalibur. Here we have an Excalibur 9 tray. I am getting some silicone mats for this because I'm going to be making a lot of fruit leather. I have so many blackberries this year. My word, I have so many blackberries that I've got to do something with them. So I found a cedar, which has been one of the biggest issues we've had with blackberries. I bought a cedar years ago. Forgot about it. Didn't know, didn't, didn't even realize what I had. I was started looking for a food meal and I was like, oh, okay. I went downstairs, was straightening up my, my excess jar room and I found a cedar. And Aaron's like, what? And I'm like, yep, I just need to see if I have all the pieces of parts to it. But I had one that I, it looked like what I wanted. And um, I'm gonna be making lots of fruit leather this year. And we're excited about that. But I do love the dehydrator. But again, we do not run it in the summertime and I will do fruit leathers. I will also do our gojis in here. We, yeah, and we do have another cheaper one. We do have another one. Um, it just doesn't do as well as we've noticed as the Excalibur does. No, I like my Excalibur. I really do. And I know there's a couple of different brands you can get. Um, I want to say the new big one is a Kassar or something like that. The one that Rain Country uses. Um, I, I will say that the metal trays are better. We had metal trays with our cheaper one. Mm -hmm. They won't fit in this one, and the metal trays for this one's really pricey. It is something I eventually want to go up to, because I don't like these little plasticky ones, but that'll be a month where I have some extra cash in the budget to do that. First, I need to get silicone trays for the fruit leather. It's kind of important. I You can use parchment paper. But I'm going to tell you, I did squash in this last year with parchment paper or the beginning of this year. I was so frustrated. I probably spent two hours pulling parchment paper off the squash. 
You can remember. Yeah, it was, it was bad. It was bad. Um, I mean, I, I can't keep doing this. That just takes too much time. You got to weigh the consequences and the benefits of using the silicone. I don't dehydrate over 115 degrees unless it's the recipe specifically states it. For most of my fruits and vegetables, I keep it at 115. I've not had any problem, and I will tell you, I do dehydrate for a longer <laughs> than what most recipes call for. If it says 10 hours, typically mine's going to take longer than 10 hours, and I'm not overcrowding the trays, which can be a problem with me, but Aaron will tell you that when I spend the dehydrator, I really don't overcrowd anything. It's normally one even layer, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Far apart. And we typically run them for two to three days, but we don't run it at night. We do stop it at night. That's one of the things that we do do. We don't. The only thing we let run at night is the freeze dryer because it has to, you can't stop and start its cycle. So that's the other um, caveat with this one. I'm not allowed to run appliances at night. It makes hair very uncomfortable. So now let's go to the kitchen. I'm going to show you my other two tools that we use pretty heavily this time of year. So now we're in the kitchen and this is probably the two methods that I've been doing the most for, preser for preserving food. And the main method I use for preserving food because we preserve a lot of fruit, um, we do a lot of jellies and jams, all of that kind of stuff is water bath canning. Now I will tell you, this isn't the only water bath canner I have. I have another seven quart and then I have an old Presto pressure canner that I would use as well. So I would always be able to do at least 14 quarts at one time but i saw this aaron showed it to me this 18 no 15 quart pressure canner amish pressure canner not pressure canner water bath canner and i had to have it i was like this will save me so much time if i didn't think it would be too heavy for my stove and i didn't need two of the eyes i probably would have gotten two but that would be too much for my stove <laughs> there's no water in it i dumped it out <laughs> So as you can see, this thing is very, very deep. And um, I did a review on this and I would say I still love it. It's still wonderful, it does a great job. You can get, whenever I'm doing pint jars, which I um, have been doing a lot more pints as I've grown in my canning journey. When you're doing pints, it's really amazing. You can get so many pints in here. If you get a second one of these, you can actually have two levels. And it really does a good job. My only complaint is it's heavy and you can get ones with spigots. Somebody actually had the great idea of using a water pump, like a little one from Harbor Freight, which is a really great idea. A lot of times I just take one of my pots with a handle and just crank the water over. Um, that works out pretty decent. But I will say this is probably one of the most heavily used canners that I have now. Now I did use my little, my little round ones for a really long time. Um, I, it was nothing for me to have both of those going on the stove at one, at one time, but they would take up the big eyes both and you couldn't process and can at the same time. With this one, it only takes up half my stove so I can have this ready to go. I could be canning a small batch, but then I could be cooking down like tomatoes or starting my next batch of sugar water syrup for blueberries or something while I have peaches in here. That works out pretty well for me. Wouldn't you say? Oh yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you've, you've seen both. I feel like this one's much faster. Well, we don't use the other, other ones, ones really anymore. You make sure you have, when it's canning time, you have enough to, to use that one. Well, if I needed to do a small batch, I would do yes this one this one can be a water bath canner and it'd be a pressure canner now i do know that there are things that say this is not you know pr approved and that's the choice you have to make but i love my presto pressure canner this is not a cooker this is a canner so the way this works is it if, if you have an instant pot it's going to work very similar so you have it it looks exactly the same it's a little bit bigger a little bit heavier and all you do is you put your put your lid down so you got to make sure you line it up it covers and then it has this little valve here that pops up and that's what keeps it secure because once that little valve pops up this can't be turned 
So until it tells you when everything's ready, it's so easy. Hands off. It is, it's hands off. You have to hit a button a couple of times, but they have this wonderful quick start guide. And it's for both bullying, water bath canning, um, and also pressure canning. Now you can only do pints and half pints for water bath canning in this. If I was going to do anything in this right now, it would be peppers. That would be the only thing I would True. need to do. That's that's the one thing I do small batches mm -hmm. of because they don't. I don't have the time right. between those. But I will tell you, this thing has really made me fall in love with pressure canning. I have an all American. Hey. I have the Presto. I have the double. We have the double all American. But we also had a bit of an accident with the all American. Yeah. <laughs> the regulator popped off, which is why I will always have as big of one of these as I can get, um, a stove vent, because it came off, hit it, and it could have been bad. It could have been. It could have been so bad. And after that, it scared me. I'm just, I'm terrified of that beast. And I've moved to this little thing, and I've been doing a lot of canning with it. I've canned oh, a yeah. lot of chicken. I've been canning potatoes. I've really been doing a lot of canning with this, and I plan to do a lot, lot more. But for me, it's very easy, very hands-off. I could put a batch in here, in the morning around 10 o'clock and it's done by two. And I don't have to monitor it, which is what I love. It gets to the temperature it needs to be. It does everything inside of itself. And that's what I like about this. So I would say canning is probably my favorite way to preserve food. Yeah, and, and, but this one too, it doesn't use as much It does not use as much energy as, as a stove. As the stove I does. It does not. We tested this. Mm -hmm. For me, Katie Chicken, we cannot see a actual spike in the amount of pressure it actually pulls or amount of energy it's using um, whenever I use this. We could not see a difference. It didn't jump up over 30 kilowatts a day. We were still seeing around the 26, 28 kilowatt hours that we were when I wasn't running this, which is pretty amazing and another reason why I love this thing. And... You also freeze. I freeze. I use my freezer for certain food items. Like I tried to can beets this year and they lost their color. Now I know you can still eat them. I know you can still eat them if they lose their color. Beets is what she said. Yeah, the beets. That's what I said. I had a hard time understanding. Oh, it beets. <laughs> B-E-T-S. <laughs> the accent. I have a hard time eating them when they lose their color. It just, I, I just can't. It, that's not right. I would much prefer to freeze them. When I freeze them, I never have an issue with them losing their color. They always come out of the freezer like they came out of the garden. And um, they're just such an easy thing to freeze and they really don't take up that much space. I also use it for hash browns, things of that nature, twice baked potatoes, the things that we need to put up. But I'm really leaning towards this for more of my meats to get a lot of meat out of the freezer to get a lot of things that I don't need keep in the freezer for long-term storage. If I lose vegetables, it hurts, but it does not hurt nearly as bad as me losing meat. Wouldn't you say? I agree, and I can tell you what, it's nice seeing a pantry shelf now with canned chicken. Yes, yeah, he was so shocked I had done so much. He knew I was working on it, and I had been working on it, but he hadn't actually seen it in the pantry. And I'm just going to keep building that up because all that food is just going to help us further and make my life a little bit easier. Plan on making some quick and easy meals that if something were to happen to me, I were to get sick, I were to go down, Aaron could throw it together and it would be super easy for him using the freeze dryer, the dehydrator, the canners, whatever it takes. He can open up a can of apples for the little one. I mean, he could. Yep. It should leave them straight from the jar. But these are the ways that we are primarily focused on processing our food. I know there's a lot of other ways, a lot of other methods to do that. I'd love to hear what you are doing. We kind of do a little bit of everything. It depends on what we're doing. It really depends on what we're doing. If I'm freeze drying, I like to do my squashes in the freeze dryer. I think they do a lot better. I like to can my fruit um, just because it's so much easier for me. Um, I know my little one loves freeze-dried strawberries. We just don't grow enough strawberries yet to freeze-dry, but that is coming. We are hoping to, you know, correct that and be able to freeze-dry our strawberry needs. So that'll be another thing we'll be freeze-drying. 
um, a canned chicken for us to have. And then we use a freezer for things like our beets and our potatoes and other items that we have. So we use a, we use a whole bunch of different methods. We just have to find the one that works best for you. And not everybody has enough freezer space to cover their needs for a year from everything out of the garden. So you kind of need to have different ways to do different things. Um, I will say like things like blueberries and berries, I do not like to can like whole or not can whole, but like to dehydrate whole. We tried to dehydrate bad blueberries one year. They just takes way too long. They just, it, they took forever. And then we've seen people freeze dry them. And again, that's one of those things that just. That's too much work that goes into way too having much work. to make sure you put a hole in each one to make sure they get done. And I've seen numerous people say it takes a couple of days or longer, you know, so it's not worth the energy consumption. For what point. we would get out of right. it. So I prefer to can my blueberries and I prefer to can them whole instead of making jelly or to make syrup. Um, I prefer to hopefully these uh, blackberry fruit leathers work out really well. That would be a great use for that and a great snack to have throughout the year and the winter and the spring before the next batch comes in. Um, if I can make sure the cedar works and get it to where it's palatable for everybody. So it's just a whole bunch of different ways that you can do things. Let me know in the comments below what you do. As always, check out our link tree. You'll see all of our other content. And you have anything else to add? No. It's a lot, it's a lot. And I will say, these were investments. Yes. These were investments. Um, this, we actually got this before the house was done. I saw it on sale. It was so hard to find them. So hard to find them. But I am seeing more and more people use them. Um, I've uh, seen um, Jamiral use it on hers. I've seen a few other um, people on the internet use them. I've I've not seen as many people use this one, but also know Jamiro has this one. She also has the All-American Canner, the two-stack one. So my family's not nearly as big as hers, but <laughs> we have the kind of the same idea and setup. Um, but these are investments. They're investments. You're going to spend a little bit of money on these. But I would say for my peace of mind, and we budgeted for them, and we did not go into debt, we saved for them, they were absolutely worth the cost. So... Let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. And as always, thank you for joining us on The Candy Couple, where we work hard, live simple, and enjoy life. Have a wonderful day.